Hey guys, we've seen some decent offers from Nokia so far this year, and now it's pulling out all the stops with this flagship phone, the Nokia 8. With so much competition though, is the package spicy enough to be your 2017 flagship? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and this is our Nokia 8 review. Our steel Nokia 8 isn't actually made from steel, that's the name of the color, but it's not too far off. The unibody is carved from 6000 series aluminum, and it really looks and feels durable. But let's not forget that it was 6000 series aluminum that started the Bengate scandal with the iPhone 6 Plus. Make sure to check out some rigidity tests before you buy. It's a conservative build, not too flashy and definitely not bezel-less, but you do see a few curves here and there. There's a bit of a camera bump on the back so the phone will wobble on a table, it's not a big deal though. Built around a 5.3 inch IPS LCD display, the Nokia 8 isn't huge. It's even a bit smaller than its mid-range brother, the Nokia 6. But this smaller screen size coupled with a QHD resolution makes for some nice crisp images. Outdoors, this is the best LCD we've seen yet. Sunlight legibility is actually better than most AMOLEDs, even rivaling the iPhone 7 Plus. There's an always on display too, but it's more like sometimes on to save battery. You can set it to go to sleep when you're not moving the phone, and it will turn back on when you do. The front mounted fingerprint reader sits below the screen and is surrounded by backlit navigation keys. You can use it to wake up or unlock your phone, but it's not the fastest reader out there. The Nokia 8 does have both a modern USB Type-C port and the more classic 3.5mm jack for connectivity. We're glad to move past the micro USB ports of Nokia's other phones. We appreciate that the already ample internal storage is expandable through microSD. There is IP54 dust and splash resistance too, which is missing from the other Nokia phones. Don't get too careless though, as the Nokia 8 isn't fully waterproof. The bottom facing speaker is not the loudest, but it has pretty clear sound. We're left wondering though, why aren't there stereo speakers like there are on the Nokia 6? At the heart of the phone is a Snapdragon 835 chipset, which is also in this year's other top performing phones. In benchmarks, it was a dead heat between the Nokia 6 and its flagship competition. Now according to Nokia, there's an advanced heat dispersal system inside, which should keep it cooler during heavy use. We definitely noticed this during testing. After running all the benchmarks, the phone didn't even seem warm. Plus, it's just super snappy one of the most responsive phones we've held in a while. Battery life is surprisingly good on the Nokia 8. It's better than Sony's Xperia XE Premium and the LG G6. With the quick charger, the phone goes from 0 to 50% in about 30 minutes. There's no wireless charging here though. The Nokia 8 runs on Android 7.1.1 Nougat with a Nokia overlay. It's pretty bare bones Android, with most features being handled by Google's app package. Google Photos, Google Assistant, which you'd see on basically any Android device out there. The OS enhancements are pretty basic, but the upside is we should see a pretty fast update to Android 8 Oreo. Nokia is taking some pride in the Nokia 8's Zeiss branded dual cameras, which are both 13 megapixels and f2.0. In this setup, one camera has a color sensor and the other black and white. The camera interface is proprietary and it works well. We only wish there were more options in manual mode. There's no shutter speed control, among other things. Now, unlike Huawei's combination, Nokia's dual cameras don't provide for lossless zoom. You can stack their output to improve image quality, though we didn't notice any real difference. The shot just took longer. But the cams do work together to blur the background behind your subject. This happens automatically and produces some really nice looking portraits. Regular daylight shots with the color camera impress us a lot with their high level of detail, moderate sharpness, and vibrant colors. There's a wide dynamic range and the noise is kept pretty low. Black and white photos look just as great, but with even better dynamic range and lower noise. At night we ended up with some nicely detailed and true to life color photos, as well as some low noise, high contrast shots in black and white. The Nokia 8 is really good at night but it's still slightly behind the Galaxy S8 or the LG G6. We do have to mention, throughout all the shooting we did have some issues with the autofocus. We really hope the problem is just with our particular review unit though. Regardless, the front cam has a 13 megapixel resolution and autofocus too. Selfie shots look great with the same high quality we see on the main cam. 
Videos can be shot in either 1080p or 4K resolution. 1080p video has decent sharpness and detail compared to other phones. But compared to its rivals, 4K video quality is just average. Detail isn't too impressive, and the video is overall a bit soft. We do appreciate the OIS, though. There is one big advantage with these recordings, and that's the audio. With three HDR microphones, you can capture Ozo-branded 360-degree sound. Of course, we didn't forget the Bothy. With a feature called Dual Sight, you can take pictures or record video from the front and rear cam at the same time. And you can livestream this directly to YouTube or Facebook if you want to. The concept is pretty neat. You can see your face and reactions alongside something like a fun concert. But sadly, the audio and video quality take a big hit in Bothy mode. For a decent recording, especially of music, it really feels better to stick to normal video. So, while the Bothy wasn't as impressive as we'd hoped, the Nokia 8 still delivers some top-notch photos and great audio recording. These days, not a ton of high-quality content is being produced on phones. But with devices like this coming out, maybe that's starting to change. Overall, the Nokia 8 is a well-built smartphone that can give the top flagships a run for their money. Although it doesn't have interesting software features, it more than makes up for that with everything else it has to offer. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below if you enjoyed this video. And you can stop by gsmarina.com to see our full test findings. See you next time!